So after starting 0-2, the Baltimore Ravens rumble back and rip off two back-to-back -back wins against the Dallas Cowboys and the 3-0 Buffalo Bills who fall to 3-1. The Sleeping Giant has officially awoken. The Baltimore Ravens make a statement on Sunday Night Football, and uh, I hope you guys are ready, man, because the purple shades are back baby so we're going to talk about our top five takeaways the stats the clips everything you need to know about this game what we take away we're going to talk everything ravens football let's go ahead and dive into it at number one our first takeaway is that the baltimore ravens defense was absolutely smothering it wasn't just good i mean it was dominant the Buffalo Bills were not able to get anything going. They couldn't get a consistent ground game going. They were completely outmatched by the Baltimore Ravens secondary. The corners were in tight coverage all night. Marlon Humphrey was all over the place. But we got a glimpse of what this defense can be. Kyle Van Noy in the pass rush. I mean, Josh Allen was under consistent pressure. The Bills averaged 37.3 points per game heading into the game. They left with 10 points. I mean, that's an absolute dominant performance by the Ravens defense. This is the Ravens defense that we knew was there, that we knew they were capable of this type of performance. Kyle Hamilton flying around seven tackles. Roquan Smith and Marlon Humphrey each had six tackles. Marlon Humphrey adds in a pass deflection. He was tight in coverage. He was a blur coming off the edge as a blitzer. And then the pass rush, man. David Ojabo getting pressure. Kyle Van Noy, two sacks. I mean, what about Kyle Van Noy turning into a dominant pass rusher at 33 years old? Over 13 sacks in his last 18 games with the Ravens. That's absolutely absurd. And then Adafi Owe gets in on the action, gets another sack, and uh, is showing why he was a first-round pick and why the Baltimore Ravens decided to pick up that fifth-year option. At number two, let's talk about Derrick Henry. This guy, there was so much talk about him possibly being washed. You know, he's 30 years old. He's on the back end of his career. Well, all I know is that when he touches the football, good things happen. He's special. An 87-yard touchdown off the first offensive play shows elite speed. Eric Henry, you know, he, he opens up the play-action game. You know, guys running to the ball, trying to stop him from getting getting started in the backfield. And our offensive line just did a great job of giving uh, Derrick Lane's receivers did a great job as well, you know, blocking down the field and letting Derrick do his things. Shout out to the tight, end, tight ends as well. Check this out. A 21.29 miles per hour top speed on his 87-yard touchdown run. Tied for the fourth fastest speed by a ball carrier this season at 30 years old. He's supposed to be washed, but yet... He's ripping off 87-yard touchdown runs. That was Henry's eighth highest speed since 2018. He's reached 20 miles per hour 27 times since being a ball carrier since 2018, trailing only Tyreek Hill. We talked about the type of workouts, the hill sprints, the insane work in the gym, the way he treats his body, and man, does that show up on Sundays. And it was a beautiful thing to watch on Sunday Night Football. 209 total yards two touchdowns. Derrick Henry now leads the entire NFL in rushing yards. No surprise. And then when it comes to the ground game, let's also talk about Justice Hill. This guy needs some love as well. First of all, Justice Hill is getting it done in a multitude of ways. Over 70 receiving yards and a touchdown tonight. In his first four games of the season, he has 167 total receiving yards. This guy is not just a, you know, little scat back spread, you know, like this is a legit weapon for the Baltimore Ravens offense. Justice Hill is a weapon at this point, man. 167 total receiving yards, caught a touchdown. He he kept, he uh he runs draws so well, shot out of the cannon with explosiveness, clutch third down conversions. So, the one-two punch going right now with Justice Hill and Derrick Henry is truly special, and not to mention Keaton Mitchell could be coming back in the coming weeks, and that's just going to be not fair for opposing defenses to deal as far as the ground attack. Then you're going to have four elite rushing threats in Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Justice Hill, and Keaton Mitchell all to deal with, you know, running out of the same backfield. And then you got Patrick Ricard, who, by the way, Patrick Ricard had a dominant, dominant game. There was uh, a block that he took out two 
Bills defenders. <laughs> I think he um, hit DeMar Hamlin in another corner or safety. Just completely washed him out of the play that sprung Derrick Henry for like a 39-yard run. Uh, Patrick Ricard also uh, recovered that uh, fumble by Derrick Henry in the end zone. He had a dominant, dominant performance. Shout out to the Ravens and the rushing attack. The Ravens didn't need to do much else because they were able to just run the ball at will, run the clock out, you know, pick up six yard carry, 20 yard carry, five yard carry, three yard, 20 yard carry, just absolutely gashing the Bills right in the teeth of their defense. And number three, let's talk about Lamar Jackson and the pass catchers because Lamar, for the first time, you know, playing an elite opponent like this in a long time that I can remember, didn't have to do much. You know, he was super efficient with what he did. He looked absolutely excellent, dynamic as a runner, on point as a passer. Um, he was dialed in tonight, but he didn't have to do much. He was super efficient, 14 of 19 for two touchdowns and 133 passer rating. And check this out. He had that wide open drop, Mark Andrews. Dropped the ball. Uh, probably would have picked up another 20 yards there. And then um, Rashad Bateman dropped. I know it was tight coverage. He was held before, but he could have definitely caught that ball in the end zone where he dropped it, went off his hands. So if they don't drop those two balls, you're talking about 16 of 19 with three passing touchdowns, probably around 200 passing yards. And just absolutely, the Ravens offense did whatever they want. They wanted to run screens. Bills couldn't stop it. Wanted to run inside runs, outside runs. You know, it, we get in third and long, and Lamar Jackson absolutely throws a bullet, a dart right over the middle of the field to Nelson Aguilar, who catches it in traffic, and just the right. They couldn't stop anything. They couldn't stop anything the Ravens wanted to do. It was absolute domination for four quarters. But I thought that that catch by Nelson Aguilar was incredible, and it was just a big gutsy third down conversion strike where Lamar Jackson was like, yeah, he could just tell he's locked in. We outgained them 427 to 236 yards. So nearly 200 more yards than the Buffalo Bills. The previous three games, we outgained our opponent by nearly 100 yards each. And if you remember in our Ravens Bills preview, I said, I'm not, you know, give myself a little humble pat on the back here, but I said, the Ravens, they're close. They keep outgaining their opponents. They have all these dumb penalties and stuff. But eventually, the floodgates are going to burst. And I predicted a 33-17 to win by the Baltimore Ravens. But it was even better. <laughs> what was it? 35-10. to The Ravens get a 25-point lead against a really good Buffalo Bills team. I'm not going to pretend like the Bills are a scrub team. Like, no, they're, they were 3-0, and super efficient, doing everything they wanted to do to opposing defenses. But that ended tonight. We said the floodgates would eventually open, and they did. And when it rained, it poured, man. They also had 22 first downs compared to 12 on the Buffalo Bills' complete domination. And number four, let's talk about the pass protection and the offensive line. That has consistently gotten better. Yeah, um, my offensive line did a great job. Uh, two weeks back to back. Um, I, I believe if we had one sack tonight, I believe that was my fault. Uh, I believe I should have got out of that. Um, but offensive line did a great job tonight. Um, and like I said, not just Pat McCarty, but Daniel Falele as well. You know, because that's the guy who they were speaking on the, the most. You know, but just um, all the guys, man, they just bought their tail off and they did what they're supposed to do. Talked about this the first few, you know, before the season even started. We said, hey. Three new starters. Andrew Voorhees, essentially a rookie. Daniel Falele playing a new position at guard. Um, the rookie right, right tackle, Roger Rosengarten, you know, shuffling in with Patrick McCarry. We said, hey, this could be some some growing pains. And um, we hadn't found our identity as a run-blocking offensive line, tight ends, fullback uh, offense yet. Uh, and we were relying too much on straight drop-back passing. And the offensive line wasn't ready for it. We identified that. We added in a lot more screens, you know, under center play action, moving the pocket, doing some other things to alleviate pressure. And then whenever we have had some true drop back passing sets, it's been much better. Like stuff has been cleaned up where they're passing off stunts better. They're having more technically sound performances. And one thing that really helped last night was Roger Rosengarten, man. He, as the starting right tackle, I thought was money. Like I put it out on, on X. I said, Roger Rosengarten looking good. And um, he needs to be the starting right tackle moving forward. You you can't take him out as the right tackle, especially like you can trust him in pass pro reps right now, 
He looks really good. And we said this offensive line was going to improve. They were going to take some lumps. And they might still take some lumps at times. But they are improving. They're playing together better as a unit. Um, they're playing better individually. Ronnie Stanley, this dude, we talked about Ronnie Stanley a lot the last few years. But he's went from, you know, he went from 2019 all pro dominant left tackle to injury after injury after injury. Shell of himself, Ronnie Stanley, to finally having like a full healthy offseason to now where he's back. I mean, he's he looks almost as good as 2019 Ronnie Stanley all pro version. I mean, he's locking down opposing pass rushers on the left side, keeping Lamar Jackson's blind side clean. And he's also getting out in space as a run block, clearing ways for Derrick Henry, and it's really fun to watch. The offensive line, Ronnie Stanley, Rosengarten, all big parts of uh, you know the success for this offensive line so far. Patrick McCarry, shout out to him for starting at left guard. He did pretty well. And then uh, right guard Daniel Flelele is showing slow but subtle improvement. At number five, Travis Jones. This guy... It didn't show up on the stat sheet a lot, but man, was he making his presence known. Michael Pierce was out, you know, and let's talk about that. The Ravens did this to the Bills without their starting left guard, without their starting nose tackle, Michael Pierce. They still have Keaton Mitchell coming back here soon. The Ravens are trending in the right direction right now after starting 0-2, now ripping off these two wins against good opponents, the Cowboys and the Bills. Um... Yeah, would you like to have that Raiders game back? Would you like to uh, clean up some of those mistakes against the Chiefs, missed field goals and stuff? Yeah, the Ravens could easily be 4-0 right now. The reality is is they had some adversity. They got punched in the mouth with, with an 0-2 start, and uh, they responded excellent. Travis Jones, shout out to him for stepping up in the absence of Michael Pierce, um, not only as a run defender, but the dude is ragdolling guys as a pass rusher i mean absolutely throwing guys off their spot 320 pound guards making them look like jv by the way as i'm recording this 27 seconds ago lamar jackson posts this is a team sport i'm not out here satisfied when i throw 300 yards but take an l if i throw 50 yards and we win that's what matters y'all stop commenting on our socials about the yards fan duel or parlays ain't hit so shout out to Lamar Jackson, you know, not caring, being being a true team player, not caring about the yards, the, the totals, the stats. Uh, that's what a lot of people look at. But the reality is the Ravens didn't have to throw the ball because of how dominant they were on the ground. Um, we didn't have, we didn't need Lamar Jackson to be Superman tonight. I mean, we just executed at a high level. The, the coaching and the game planning aspect of this was money. We talked about, we gave... The coaching staff, some criticism over the last few weeks, rightly deserved in some cases. But whenever they have this type of performance, we got to give them love because, I mean, Todd Munkin was in his bag. I mean, he kept the Bills and hit the, and the Bills defensive coordinator off balance all night. They didn't know what to do, what to throw at the Ravens. I mean, the coaching plan was incredible. John Harbaugh, I thought, managed the game excellent. There was one bad mistake where he called a timeout after there was already an injury timeout and stuff like that's going to happen, you know, because he didn't call the timeout. It was an injury timeout. So, you know, he goes to call a timeout, realized the rules, you know, you can't call back to back timeouts and then call the first one. So it was, you know, one of those things where he, he instantly knew it. He was like, man, he was irritated that he made that mistake. But besides that, John Harbaugh, excellent coaching job, uh, Defensive coordinator Zach Orr, he shut down one of the best offenses in football. Actually, the best offense in football in points per game, 37.3 points per game. Shut him down to 10 and um, got turnovers, got sacks, kept them off balance. The Ravens offense kept the Bills off balance all night. Uh, dominant coaching performance at all three levels. So here's what I love about this football team. Dominant performance, still super humble ready to put their head down and get ready for Cincinnati. The Bengals are going to be a really tough challenge with a really great offense. Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, Yoshevis, Jamar Chase, two good running backs. Like uh, A great 
much improved offensive line, by the way. Um, the defense has some holes, has some issues, but are getting some players back healthy. We're going to preview that, so make sure you guys subscribe and notification bell on. But the Ravens are not satisfied. Here's what Kyle Hamilton had to say about not arriving yet, not being satisfied. Uh, I, say, I think it says a lot, but at the same time, you know, we didn't win a Super Bowl today. So we got to come out, um, Bengals next week, a uh, division game. Bengals next week, division game, um, going on the road, a uh, big win for us uh, today. But, you know, we got to move forward to next week, and it's only week four, and we're trying to get to what um, we need to get to we didn't get to last year. So we got a long road ahead of us, but I think we're on a good path. All right, guys, so smash the like button if you enjoyed today's content. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.